when you can't decide between copying Japan or Singapore. This is Harja Mukti, the southern terminus of the Chibubur line and is a 7 minute walk away from Chibubur Junction Mall. But before we continue, we need to talk about the short but crazy history of this line. So originally, they planned to build a monorail and the lines looked a bit weird. You've got one line going from Tamananggir to Kamang Malayo and this slightly squashed loop line connecting Guningan, Palmera, and Sudirman. Good thing this was cancelled because the route layout is not very useful for most commuters and building a monorail is sacrilege for multiple reasons that other urbanist channels have addressed. Fortunately, conventional rail was chosen along with a more commuter-oriented route. Two lines from Bekasi and Cibubur meet in Chawang and enter Kuningan, connecting two of Jakarta's densely populated suburbs with the CBD, and construction started in 2015. Though not before construction of the monorail was prematurely started, littering parts of Central and South Jakarta with now unused pillars. After multiple delays and an accident in 2021 where two trains kissed each other violently, the system opened in 2023. Frequencies however were not that good, with each individual line having around 18 minute frequencies. And there were multiple incidents of power going out, stranding hundreds of people inside. Sometime later in 2023, there were reports of excessive wear on the train wheels, so a lot of trains got put out of service, and the frequency of peak became every 35 minutes. Fortunately, that issue got solved, and frequencies have been gradually increasing until as of writing this video, each line runs around every 10 to 12 minutes, with 15 minute headways at the very end of the schedule, aka at night. Now, back to Harja Mukti. Besides the mall that has what I believe to be the last unrenovated time zone in Greater Jakarta, it also has this bus shelter where you can take Transjakarta Line 7C, D11, and 7V to Chawang Central and Pasar Rebo. The LRT station itself is also served by Trans Depok buses to Depok Terminal, which run every 10 to 15 minutes, and Trans Pakuan feeder buses to Bogor, which unfortunately have very limited departures and only runs on weekdays. There is a very nice and wide sidewalk between the mall and the LRT station, but with very few trees, yeah, I'm being cooked alive walking here. Entering the train, you're greeted with soft seats, decently cold AC, and doors that make you duck like you're boarding an uncle. This train runs on 750 volts DC third rail on standard gauge track. The inside of the train is pretty loud, but we're only going 80 km per hour. The tracks are also not as smooth as the MRT, with the carriage noticeably shaking, but it is still smoother than the commuter line and the absolute rodeo that is Trans Jakarta. The trains themselves have six cars and each car has three doors per side. What makes it an LRT is the fact that trains are only 2.44 meters wide. For reference, the MRT trains are 2.9 meters wide. What makes this train special though is the fact that they have grade 3 automation. They basically drive themselves in most cases. The staff do sort of take control of the trains but only at the terminus. Anyway, Tirachas mostly has TOD and according to Google Maps, a place to do archery. The only transit connections here are Angkots. Now we have Kampung Rambutan. This station mainly serves Kampung Rambutan bus terminal, providing connections to a bunch of Trans Jakarta lines such as Corridor 7 and its branches, the S22 to Tiputat, and the express service to Tanjung Priok that only runs in mornings and evenings. Being one of the largest bus terminals in Jakarta, it also has buses to well everywhere. One non-Trans Jakarta bus that stops here that I like to use, though I prefer to board in Pasar Rebo, is the Cikarang Poris line by Agra Mas. Even though I rated this line poorly in another video due to long wait times, I find that if you're going from Tangerang to East Jakarta, this is the best way to do it, and the 30 minute wait is a bit less painful if you're going that far. Now, back to the LRT. Unfortunately, this station does not provide good views of the terminal. Next, we have the MEE, one of the theme parks in Jakarta. You do need to take a shuttle bus from this station to the park. So it is debatable whether the LRT is actually the better option than just taking the 7D. The theme park was recently renovated. No, I have not been to the post-renovation Taman Mini. Right across the station is Tamini Square Mall and Makassar BRT Shelter serving Corridor 9. Moving north, we have Tawang. The gap between the MEE and Tawang station may be the largest in the whole system, being almost 6 kilometers. It's also the largest LRT station since it needs to accommodate transfers for people going from Cibubur to Bekasi and back and the roof is colored orange. I mention this because the roof color of the LRT is not random. Chibubur line stations have purple roofs, Bekasi line stations have green roofs, and the station that serves both lines have orange roofs. 
Also, do not desecrate the infrastructure. Anyway, this station is also directly connected to Chawang BRT Shelter, the meeting points of Corridor 7, 9, and a bunch of other lines, the newest of which being the reactivated 4K that connects Pulau Gadung with Block M. Here you can also take the B11 and B12 to Bekasi. Those lines are a better option than the LRT if traffic is light and your destination is a bit far from the LRT. The surrounding area of the station is mostly offices, most notably the BNN. Moving east and now to the Bekasi line, we have Halim, directly connected to Halim Bush Station. Also, is it just me or that the Bekasi line is a bit more crowded than the Chibubur line? The two stations are connected by a sky bridge and I have an entire video explaining the worst so go watch that after this. I'm going to speedrun the next three stations. Jati Bening Baru has some TOD being built and you get nice views of the highway rest area. Tikunir 1 has easy access to the main road and is completely surrounded by houses. Meanwhile, Tikunir 2 has this weird piece of empty land that most likely would be new TOD. Between Jati Bening Baru, Tikunir 1 and Halim, you'll see a pretty long building. That's not a building, that's the tunnel the Wush uses to cross the highway. Next is Bekasi Barat, directly connected to Transpatriot Line 1 from Sumarekon Bekasi to Vida, which runs every 10 minutes. Here's a tip. If you want to go to Sumarekon Bekasi, use the bus stop that is in the lobby of Revo Mall. If you want to go to Vida, use the bus stop on the north side of the station. Speaking of which, yes, this station is directly connected to Revo Mall. Revo Mall is not the only mall here though. There are six malls within walking distance, though one of them is really stretching the definition of walking distance, and one is currently under construction, that is Pakuan Mall Bekasi. The station is also completely surrounded by houses. I mean, what do you expect? This downtown Bekasi. One of Jakarta's suburban satellite cities that has a population of 3 million. The easternmost station in this system is Jati Mulia. It has this nice TOD that is Grandika City, still completely surrounded by houses, and nearby is one of Bekasi's landmarks. The other one is the inverted Louvre Pyramid, easy access to HM Joyo Martono Road, where multiple intercity buses stop there along with Transjakarta Line B21. This is also where the depot of the system is located. Moving back to Jakarta, we have Chiliwung. Honestly, not much apart from a bunch of offices and connections to Corridor 9's Chiliwung BRT shelter. The name Chiliwung comes from the fact that this station is located right next to Chiliwung River, one of the major rivers in Jakarta. Where things get interesting is Chikoko Station, which is directly connected to both Chikoko BRT shelter and Chawang Commuter Line Station. The station is completely surrounded by houses and offices, though nearby is the Bat Eko Park. Between this station and Pancoran, there's the Dirgantara Monument. It is completely surrounded by roads and is a fulfillment of the car center prophecy. If you're an emerging megacity, take this warning from the world's second largest urban area. Do not copy the Americans, don't build highways, build metros. Next is Pancoran Station, connected to Pancoran BRT Shelter, serving Corridor 9. If you want to get to Block M or any other place served by Corridor 13, this is the ideal place to transfer, as there's three lines that go from here to Tendian that are the 4K, 5N, and 13B. This place is mainly surrounded by offices, but there is this weird piece of empty land behind the station, and the Smesco Convention Center is a 2 minute walk away. Now, entering Kuningan, the train goes through the infamous Kuningan Bend before then entering Kuningan Station. A station that is completely surrounded by offices, most notably being the Ministry of Health. Below the station is Kuningan BRT Shelter, serving Corridor 6 and its many branches. If you want to go to Rokas, take the 6C. If you want to go to Lotte Mall, Use the 6K. Moving north, we have Rasuna Site, connected to Rasuna Site BRT Shelter and is directly connected to Plaza Festival Mall. There isn't much in the mall itself, but behind it is a university. Next is Setiabudi, directly connected to Setiabudi BRT Shelter. Again, this place is just offices, most notably the KPK. The last station is Duku Atas. It is surrounded by lakes for some reason and there's a good amount of empty land here. However, it has a lot of transit connections, just that most of them are a several hundred meter walk away. First, you have connections to two BRT shelters, Duku Atas serving Corridor 1 and Galunggung serving Corridors 4 and 6. Then you've got a sky bridge connecting this station to Sudirman Station with BNE City being a short walk away, both of which serve the commuter line, but BNE City also serves the airport train. Also in this general vicinity is Duku Atas MRT Station, serving the north-south line. Now to the problem that this system has. Some say that the LRT is poorly integrated with other modes. I somewhat agree. The LRT has both good and bad examples of integration. A good example would be the LRT stations in Kuningan, 
that have VIP shelters beneath them and one of them being connected to Plaza Festival Mall. Chicoco is another good example with the LRT, Transjakarta, and commuter line all being in a 250 meter walk range. A bad example would be Duku Atas, where Duku Atas LRT station and BNE City station are 700 meters apart, or how Duku Atas LRT station and Duku Atas BRT shelter are nearly 500 meters apart. Cibubur is another example of poor integration with Cibubur shelter and LRT station being over 500 meters apart. At the very least, they make those long walks a bit pleasant with sky bridges and white sidewalks. Some say that the LRT is poorly integrated with public spaces. I agree, the Bat Eko Park and Chikoko LRT station are 700 meters apart. This is made worse by the fact that the sidewalks are narrow, but I should also add that East Jakarta is in itself lacking in public spaces to connect your LRT with. What I've learned from making the Jakarta Mall's tier list series is that East Jakarta has no good malls apart from Aeon JGC which is on the border with North Jakarta. East Jakarta is mainly houses, offices, and trade centers. Some say that the Kuningan Ben is too tight. Well, with this amount of space to work with, I think that's inevitable. Plus, as I said in the real life tier list video, one sharp bend isn't going to make this slower than driving. Some say the train doors are too low. As someone who's just 2 centimeters shorter than this guy, I agree. But this is a pretty minor issue. I'm not going to resort to driving in rush hour just because I have to duck a bit when entering the train. Some say that the operational window is too narrow and service should be extended to midnight. I agree. The LRT should be an alternative to the incredibly infrequent night buses that Transjakarta currently operates. But for most commuters, it is already sufficient. The biggest problem with the LRT, one that hasn't been solved to this day, is speed. One year after commercial operations have started, the LRT still crawls in and out of stations. Compared to the MRT or even commuter line, it's really slow. A lesser problem still involving speed is the somewhat low operational top speed of 80 km per hour. With some stations being over 5 km apart, this system could benefit from a top speed increase to 90 km per hour. The trains themselves are capable of reaching 90, so that's an upgrade that should be considered later. So my verdict, the LRT deserves B tier, at least for now. It's reliable, it doesn't have random 30 minute gaps in the schedule like the commuter line, it's almost as frequent as the MRT, and if the highways all get clogged up by traffic, it is the fastest way to get around. But outside of peak hours, it is rather questionable whether this is actually faster than driving. All this LRT needs to do is speed up the trains. Once the LRT runs as fast as the MRT, it's getting S tier.